Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 997. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 997 to 999, click on the link below the video. Hey, this video here is a follow up to the Mr. Excel Excel is Fun trick number 126, where we sum daily totals from text dates. Now, I want to follow up here. These are not text dates. Um, they're serial numbers. So if you were to, this is a formatting sitting on top of a serial number. So if you were to go to uh, home, number group, and apply general, you could wipe away the number formatting and see that these are serial numbers. That's what allows us to do date math. I'm going to control Z, undo. Control Z. But we still have text criteria. So we want to see how to, given this three letter text for Tuesday. How in the world do we match this criteria against serial numbers? All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the text function. And this will be an array formula. This value argument here is expecting a single number. I'm going to give it a bunch of numbers. Anytime you give an argument that's expecting a single value, more than one value, you do a function argument array operation. Right, so I'm going to give the text function, you know, however many that is, that's uh, 17 values. So the text function will spit out 17 answers. Comma, this is a format, a number format. And if I put it in double quotes, DDD, that's the custom number format that takes a date and formats it as three letters. That'll be the abbreviation for the day. So check this out. I'm converting. Serial number dates, I'm going to highlight that and hit F9, the evaluation key. Boom, I've converted them to text. Now I can directly match these text items to the cr criteria I've been given, Control Z. So now I can say, hey, is anything in that array equal to this? Now I'm going to get, whoops, um, I was going to show you that trick there. Maybe I'll show you that trick in just a second. That cell has been named, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Really, it should just say D2. Now watch this. I'm going to highlight and hit F9. And now I get a series of trues and falses. Only the dates that are Tuesday get a true. Control Z. Now how am I going to use that to add? Well, first I need to put it inside the sum product. Sum product has these array arguments. You can multiply array times array. It'll um, multiply them and then add them. So these are trues and falses. I'm going to come to the end and comma. Get the second array, these numbers right here. Anytime it sees a true, um, it should pick up the number. But here's the problem. We just saw in array one the text argument with this uh, comparative operator and criteria spits out trues and falses. And some product does not understand trues and falses. So we need to convert them to ones and zeros. I'm going to do this not by times one or divide by one. I'm going to do it by double negative. Now, double negative tends to be the fastest calculating. So we will use this method. But check this out. These are minus signs. That's a comparative operator. This will calculate way after in Excel's order of operations after the subtraction. So we need to force the equal sign to calculate first. All right. So now when I highlight this, um, click on this array one argument and hit the F9 key. Now I have what I want, ones and zeros. Only when it gets a corresponding one times the corresponding number in the sales, will it multiply and then add. So Control Z, and there you go. Five, and that is exactly our goal. Now, that the text function doing an array operation actually takes a long time to uh, calculate. So we could instead use the weekday function. Now, the weekday function can look at serial numbers and tell you 1 for Sunday, 2 for Monday, 3 for Tuesday. So we could use that. But the problem is our criteria is not given as 1, 2, 3, et cetera. Not only that, but in this video over here, the text dates actually did not have three letter abbreviations. In order to use the text function, you, you can only do three. You can't do, at least I don't know how to do two or four, right? Because the standard is T-U-E. But those dates had these. So let's see how to, if you're given criteria like this, match it against these serial numbers. I'm going to go ahead and look at the weekday function. Serial number. I'm going to highlight all of these serial numbers. 
And the default gives 1 for Sunday. So if I were to leave that second argument off and highlight this and F9, I can see for Sunday I get a 1. For Tuesday, I get a 3. So I need a 3. Ah, but I can't go equals this because that's text, right? i got to show you that trick for naming in just a second. So guess what? I'm going to build a little table and with my days as text and then the second column, the number I need to match against um, the weekday output. And I'm going to do a VLOOKUP. What am I going to look up? I'm going to look up this. That way, when you build a table like this, if you have three or four or five or whatever your convention is for the dates, um, this will work. Comma The table, it'll look up the thing in column one and return the item in column two. Column number needs to be two, because the item it's looking up and returning to the formula is in column two. And we have exact match, because this first column is not sorted. So now I can get two trues when I highlight an F9, the true there, and then the other true both for Tuesdays. I still need to put this in some side of some product and convert it to ones and zeros, and then highlight this column right here. Now, some not, you know, this is inconvenient, and if it really is the convention for the business, guess what? We could go ahead and convert this from a table into an array constant. So I'm going to highlight it and hit the F9 key. Now notice we usually use the F9 key to look at our formula and how it's evolving, and then we undo it. But here, I'm going to hard code it in and leave that table there. The curly brackets house the array. Comma means go over a column, and semicolon means go down to the next row. All right, so that will work right there. Now, I did want to show you a trick for uh, naming. I'm going to actually have to go up and delete the names. We'll get error errors temporarily. Formulas, uh, Name Manager. The keyboard shortcut for Name Manager is Control F3. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these and delete. Are you, says, what, are you crazy? I know you're using these in formulas. No, I'm going to click OK. So we'll get errors here. But watch this. So here's how I created those names. Now I need to create 1, 2, 3, and 4. So no problem. If you have the name above the column or the name above the cell you want to name, simply highlight. Normally, you do it one at a time, but it'll work when you use the Control key to highlight non-contiguous ranges or ranges not next to each other. So I highlighted that, held Control. Now I'm holding Control, and I'm going to highlight there. Now I'm going to use either formulas, oh, create from selection, or the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift 3. And it asks me, do I want the top row and the left column? I don't want the left column. I just want from the top row. This would be named date. This would be named sales. This would be text criteria. And this would be odd text criteria. Click OK. And just like that, um, actually, watch this. I'm going to type in D5. And uh, I'm going to type in A2 colon to A18 just to show you a trick here. Now, imagine you created your formula, and there you have your cell references, and now you want to replace them. Instead of having to do it manually one at a time, you can highlight whatever range of cells, go up to Formulas, Define Name, and Apply Names. What Apply Names will do is it'll look through that, find out which names, defined names, um, could be used as a replacement, and it will replace them. I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, now those are replaced. Now, um, one more thing. <clears throat> in this video, Mr. Excel actually did something quite clever because there were, in this example here, there were empty cells. So if there were, the text function and the weekday function could get tripped up by that. So we just need, would need to add another condition. And there's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, array 2, I just have to create a third array and say, um, is any, are any of the dates in here 
not uh, less than, greater than symbols, and double quotes. Now, double quotes will check for empty cell and a null text string. But that would be our extra condition. But notice, that's checking for empty cell and a null text string. If you want to just, um, in, either, in either one of these formulas, they're both using some product, and we need a, th a third condition. But if you want to check just for empty cells, I like what uh, Mr. Excel did. Uh, is blank. Now, is blank, the word blank sometimes is confusing, but this function only checks for empty cells. All right? So if I highlight there, that says, oh, it is blank, but I want not. So then I could wrap the not. Now, is blank right here is spinning out a true if it's empty. And we really want it uh, to say not empty. So we need to convert the trues to falses and the falses to true. So that's when you can use the not function. All the not function does is switch a true to a false and a false to a true. And again, this one also will be um, trues and falses. Some product can't understand that, so you'd have to put a double negative. Or actually, we don't need the parentheses because there, it's just the function output. So that would work. Fine. And so now if we had a bunch of empty cells, it would not cause a problem. All right, we'll see you next trip.